Great Scott. Great Scott. Great Scott. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Easter egg filled episode of Great Scott. I'm Scotty V. Thanks for watching. So, there are many rumors swirling around, as there are wont to do when you have a movie that is highly anticipated and people that are excited. There's talk of a shared universe, there's talk of um, following the Marvel formula, which I've been advocating for years, and DC seems either unable or unwilling to do. However, it is possible that with some of the rumors, if, if some of them prove to be true, we may start to finally see some idea of a shared universe. Now, my issue with the shared universe has always been that it sort of depreciates the value of each individual hero. If you're doing a Flash movie and there's a Superman and there's a Wonder Woman and there's an Aquaman, then you go, well, what do we need a Flash for? If you are doing a Superman movie, which is obviously what Man of Steel is, then you then you go, well, Man of Steel is really special because he's the first alien and, and he's, he's here to help us and he's saving everyone and he's got superpowers. And then you start to introduce all these other heroes, some of whom who are alien, and you go, well, why is he so special? And, and you know, the, the thing that makes somebody so special is that they're unique. And now we're suddenly finding out that they're not all that unique because there are all these other heroes. However, we don't know that there's going to be a shared universe, and if there is, I also like things about that too, because then we can talk about Justice League, and we can talk about seeing other heroes pop up in each other's movies, and and it and it starts to feel more authentic to the comic book world that we're all used to reading, where they are all in a shared universe, and any given month, one hero can appear in another hero's title. Speaking of Aliens, one of the rumors that seems to be going around is that somehow, for some reason, Martian Manhunter might be one of the uh, eggs that we'll find in, in uh, Man of Steel. I'm not sure how it would occur. I'm not sure how they would explain it. I know that, in general, the Nolans, the writers, the, the, the people involved with making this movie, even though it's directed by Snyder, have said for years um, with their Batman films that they don't like the idea of a shared universe, and they don't really like the idea of aliens or otherworldly or heavily fantasy things. They like to kind of have a grounded, really realistic, gritty movie like The Dark Knight. And uh, we can see by the trailers that there are otherworldly elements in this. There are spaceships, there's flying, there are other uh, visitors from uh, another planet that are in this. There's massive... Um, the destruction on a science fiction scale, which is something that they seemed unwilling to approach in their previous attempts. And uh, Nolan stated pretty emphatically from the beginning that Batman was in a standalone universe, he was his own thing, that there were no other heroes, and that there were no other, there was no, there was no DC universe. It was Batman and it was Gotham City. Uh, we saw as early as the X-Men films with the Marvel Universe them mention a guy in a, in a spider suit swinging around on webs. Now they never really went anywhere with that, but that was an in indicator as to the idea that the Marvel producers and the people involved with Marvel, Marvel didn't really have a problem with saying there are other heroes out there and we are in a shared universe. And now, of course, that's come to full fruition with the Avengers and all these other movies, uh, Iron Man and Captain America and Thor and even Hulk, all tying into each other and really being in a shared universe. I'm waiting to see with Amazing Spider-Man 2, which I don't like that title, if, uh, if they tie that in as well now that uh, some of their lawsuits and some of their ownership rights and things are, are uh, all coming back to them. Um, but uh, back to Man of Steel, uh, I think it could be interesting to have Martian Manhunter as kind of one of the first uh, people. Uh, to help form a, a kind of an alliance of heroes. If, if it comes to a Justice League film later or whatever, we all know that Martian Manhunter is uh, oftentimes considered a core member, a core founder of the Justice League. He was a part of the five-year project, uh, the animated show uh, with the Justice League. He was on Smallville uh, in a much larger role than some of the other uh, possible cameos I'm hearing about. But he's still a very little-known hero. If you were going to do something, I think, with a cameo, you, you, you should bring in Diana, or you should bring in uh, Aquaman, or to my chagrin, Bruce Wayne. Um, not because I don't like Bruce Wayne, but because I think um, 
he's 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 very overly done. He's he's we've seen a, a heck of a lot of him more than any other hero, uh, and Superman probably second. Uh, so I guess people could make the same complaint, and I've heard people say another Superman animated movie with Superman Unbound coming out recently. Can we have some of these other heroes? And that is true. Um, there have not been many other heroes that have gotten the chance to shine. Green Lantern, even though I enjoyed it when I watched it, um, was kind of badly received, and, and it wasn't that great of a movie. Um, so we really haven't seen anybody other than Batman and Superman on the big screen uh, to be given a serious treatment and to, and to be taken seriously. The, the last Superman effort, obviously Superman Returns, didn't go over well either. This one looks like it's going to be much cooler, and there are lots of these rumors that, that uh, there are going to be indicators that we're in a shared universe. Um, I kind of like the idea of maybe Marsh and Manhunter being here on Earth and uh, not deciding to come forward as someone who could be a hero until he's inspired by Superman. This is something that I think Smallville always kind of failed in, and that was that he was kind of following the footsteps of everybody else. Oliver Queen was in an outfit and doing heroic things while Clark was still going, eh, I'm going to be a hero. Uh, Aquaman was around uh, saving people before, you know, while, Super while Clark Kent was still going, I eh, hate that I have powers. Um, you know, Impulse from the future, who was supposed to be created long after several flashes had already come and gone, was uh, running around doing things. Uh, while Clark was still going, eh, I wish I was just a normal boy. Um, so those were the, a lot of the issues I had with uh, that. But it looks, but it, but it, but it could be possible that uh, maybe Mar maybe Marsh and Manhunter arrive years before um, Superman, but has just kind of been in hiding, maybe working as a detective, helping on the side, but isn't inspired to come forward. And then we get into possible Justice League talks later, until he sees. Um, Superman doing what he does, and that that would be very. I would I would enjoy that greatly. Uh, one of the latest rumors to come out is, uh, you know, during the scene where Zod and Superman are flying at each other down the facade of the building, uh, there has been a change. And initially, it just looked like maybe some color correction was added or something along those lines. As one picture is a slightly different color, and the others, you know, when you compare them side by side, it's clear that something has changed. Uh, someone has recently found that in the background on one of the other buildings there's a neon sign or a billboard or something that is advertising a brand of comics, a comic book that uh, produces Booster Gold comics uh, either in the future or at some point. Uh, and, uh, and, and as some of us know, Booster Gold is a hero from the future who initially, like a race car driver, had all these sponsors and was trying to make money in order to get notoriety so that maybe one day he could be a member of the Justice League. I think the money and the fame went to his head and he ends up kind of being a joke. Um, this would not be a hero that I would choose to use, um, only because he is very, very little known. And, and of course, uh, getting your name into a movie and getting involved in a film like Man of Steel could change that. And he was in the Justice League show, and he was on Smallville for one episode. So some people might recognize the name Booster Gold, but I don't know that anybody is going to get a reference to um, a regular name if he's not called Booster Gold. And I don't know that anybody's going to see this comic book advertisement in the background uh, except people who are looking for it or know it's already there, and if they do see it, are they going to know that it's related to a little-known character like Booster Gold? And another thing that I've heard, which I'm very excited about, a lot of people are saying, get rid of Lex Luthor, we don't need him anymore, he's been overused, he's been everywhere. And while it's true, you know, with 10 years of Smallville, Lex Luthor was a part of that for most of it, he's been on all the animated shows, he's usually in these animated movies, and he was in the films Richard Donner and, and Lester made back in the 70s and 80s. However, I would argue he's never really been done right on film. In the TV show, Rosenbaum got to got to show him from an origin standpoint. It was very cool, and he played it very seriously, and he was awesome. Um, and, and in Lois and Clark, in the early stages, John Shea was very cool, very calculated, very charismatic. It got a little silly as the show got sillier. Uh, but on film, we've only had the Gene Hackman and the Kevin Spacey version of Gene Hackman's campy, kind of silly, over-the-top, goofy, comedic version. And people have a hard time buying that some guy without powers or anything um, is going to pose a threat to Superman to begin with. But you, when, you, when you portray him in such a light as has been done on film with this character, it just it makes Superman and Lex Luthor less 
incredible. We haven't seen him done correctly. He should be calculating. He should be heavily intelligent. He should be scheming, and he should be very dangerous, and he should use all of his resources, the city, all the people that work for him, everybody that's afraid of him, to try and get what he wants out of Superman and get what he wants out of everybody else. Uh, Mackenzie Gray, who played a clone version of Michael Rosenbaum's Lex Luthor on Smallville, is cast in Man of Steel, and there is speculation that he's going to be Lex Luthor, although fans are saying he doesn't have the charisma, he doesn't have the profile, he's not the star uh, that we need to play a character like that. Um, there's speculation that he's maybe going to be the back of Luthor's head in a scene somewhere, um, and any of these things could be possible, and I also think we didn't really get to see him fully as a star in Smallville. He was a dying man by a tree, um, and, and I thought he did fine in the role that that, that was. So he could be a, a Lex Luthor in a sequel or have a small role here, or he could be the back of his head. It could be a cool little end of credit scene type of thing. Uh, I'm very excited. I, I think um, another one that was going around was that Wayne was a, a, a big, big word. Wayne was on top of the building in, in one of the scenes in Metropolis. I believe that this is somebody that just manipulated a shot or just told us it was from there. So I think take that one with a grain of salt. Uh, there could be an appearance. Who knows? But I don't believe the, the Wayne building thing is actually in any trailer anywhere, unlike the LexCorp on top of a building during the meteor shower or the, uh, the debris falling through or this uh, comic book sign. Uh, those are actually in, and they were changes that were made uh, to add that comic book sign, which is why the two scenes look so different. But I'm very excited. I'm excited about a shared universe. I'm excited about some different characters possibly making an appearance. It makes it seem that much heavier, that much more important, and uh, that this film is, is, is going to be a big deal. So thanks, everybody, for watching. And remember, always look up in the sky.